Alright guys, today we're going to be covering chapter 41, uh, covering the combat veteran. In this chapter, we're going to go over the psychophysiology of the stress response, uh, combat veterans, the nature of PTSD, as well as assessing and providing emergency care to combat vets, and recommendations for EMTs. Now, the stuff that is covered in this chapter um, is not specifically it is covered towards combat veterans because definitely in our area we're going to be we are likely to see a high number of patients that are previous former combat vets um, however these same stress responses that we're going to cover with them is also could be possibly seen and patients that have been involved in motor vehicle accidents have been raped or had uh, some other kind of uh, traumatic situation occur Now, our combat veterans, the actual ones that have seen some type of combat, comprise less than 1% of our U.S. population. Um, but they, they can also present unique challenges related to PTSD. The reason being is a lot of us, or a lot of combat vets, and I don't, I don't mean to say us because I'm not a combat vet in any way, shape, or form. Um, they, but as a military veteran, we don't like asking for help, um, because we feel like we're supposed to, um, be strong and, you know, help those that need help. Not that we, we don't, sometimes we don't feel like we should be the ones that provide, that should be getting help. Um, one of the reactions that is commonly seen in those with any abnormal stress related to combat is what's called the thousand yard stare. And you can see this with multiple, multiple different types of patients, not just combat vets. Um, but you look at them and they're just staring off into space. Now the reason that they have this stress response, the physiology behind it, is when they're in this combat situation, when they are in a combat situation, their sympathetic nervous system is activated. Their body is going at 100 miles an hour. Epi is being dumped. Norepi is being dumped. Uh, and when they're in the combat situation, because of all of this going on, there is a high chance of that memory becoming burned and implant implanted into their um uh, into their memory so what happens when they have um, when P when they have an issue with their PTSD their their body reverts back to that event um, and their sympathetic nervous system becomes activated and the parasympathetic nervous system is not able to balance it out and bring the patient back down Now, PTSD in a combat veteran is different than that from a war-era veteran. Um, combat veteran specifically means it's a veteran who has seen combat. I am not that. A war-era veteran is a veteran who had served in the, in the military during a time of war. That is what I am. I never stepped foot overseas. I never deployed. However, I was in the military during a conflict. Now, every veteran has their own issues. No, no one has the same. Um, and there are some clues that can help us identify a combat vet um, when we arrive to them, such as uh, they may still have a military-style haircut. Um, they may have photos of. Uh, their buddies, um, war memorabilia. Um, if they had a, if a friend of theirs or someone close to them got killed in action, they may have a bracelet for that. Um, commendation awards. Uh, they may have a their a military demeanor or bearing. Um, a veteran license plate. Now, when we speak to these patients, we want to, you know, phrase our questions carefully. We don't want to um, 
disrespect them. So instead of saying, did you see combat or did you ever kill anyone? Ask them, where did you see combat? Um, so that way we can kind of get an idea of whether or not they actually are a combat vet or not. Two thirds of our combat vets, um, because of their issues with what they had to see um, and possibly even do while overseas, um, they have issues when they come home. Um, their family life becomes affected um, because of the conditions that they may, are and the symptoms that they have because of PTSD, they may revert to drugs or alcohol to numb the uh, the feelings that they may have, and up to twenty five percent, if not more, of homeless of our homeless are veterans. Now, PTSD is not a one specific thing. It is a collection of signs and symptoms. Um, it's a normal, it is a reaction that a normal person has to any abnormal situation. Um, and these memories, the memories that occur from that abnormal situation can live with them for the rest of their life and be disruptive to that person. What happens, um, any event or circumstance related to the original trauma can trigger this re-experience, such as snow being a reminder of, for someone of Korea, um, a desert looking like Afghanistan, the smell of oil or something burning um, could potentially uh, trigger them as well. Um, The, when the nervous system becomes aroused by that trigger of the trauma, um, it can result in a fight or flight response that is so extreme that they cannot suppress it. Uh, and they could, some t could potentially revert back to that situation, even if it was months or years previously. Um, and they could potentially cause physical harm to somebody. Uh, they may feel angry, helpless, um, have nightmares, <coughs> uh, even become anxious or angry um, when they're in that state. They may feel guilty, um, paranoid, hostile, agitated, and angry because of some of the stuff that happened while they were deployed. Uh, physical responses do include pain because um, they it, definitely if they have possibly been shot they may um, when the event occurred they may feel the uh, feel like they had gotten shot again um, combat vets also show early signs of aging such as heart disease diabetes loss of brain gray, gray matter um, which could possibly cause uh, dementia Um, like I said, they're also more likely to abuse alcohol and drugs. Um, when interviewing vets, when interviewing these, this group, a good assessment question is what's the most you can drink, um, and still walk and talk. The answer could potentially lead you to understand the actual level of use because of the structure of the question, as opposed to how much do you drink? They may also be a danger to oneself or others. Uh, always make sure that before going into anything that the scene is safe. <clears throat> um, if there's any signs of any weapons, you want to try to get rid of them. Watch for those signs of agitation or if they have not slept or intoxicated at risk of becoming violent. Look for um, signs of signature wounds 
um, such as amputations and traumatic brain injuries um, is signature to Iraq and Afghanistan due to the use of improvised explosive devices. Uh, traumatic brain in, uh, injury um, causes alterations in brain function um, due to some force, type of external force, whether it be uh, blunt force or penetrating. Traumatic brain injuries increases the likelihood of PTSD. This should help the EMT decide what actions to take regarding patient care when there is a suspicion of PTSD, especially if the patient has a history of TBI. PTSD may not require any action on the EMT's part other than transportation to an emergency department for referral or consultation with a mental health professional. By contrast, a patient with TBI will likely have been diagnosed and may have been under the care of a physician for the condition. Table 41-1 goes over signs and symptoms of PTSD versus a TBI or concussion. Now, a concussion or TBI can be hard to detect. The damage might al not always show up on uh, brain imaging studies, which would be considered a false negative finding. So as you can see on this slide, they have a lot of the same symptoms. However, with concussion, they're going to have the severe head and neck pain, uh, trouble focusing, hearing, confusion, dizziness. Thing is, no, the, the patient may downplay the, some of these symptoms, um, so that way they can carry on with their duty. Uh, repeated concussions could possibly lead to chronic traumatic encephalopathy. This TBI is not a disorder to be toughed out or ignored because doing either could make brain damage worse. Um, CTE is another thing that's that's coming up in um, football. Um, and the, it's still out exactly the, the depth. Um, it is very hard to diagnose. In fact, the only way to diagnose CTE as it is as it stands right now is actually through an autopsy. Um, when assessing and providing care for these pe for this for these patients, um, try to provide some type of structure, set limits, and try to establish rapport very quickly. Um, if you've never never been in combat, uh, don't try to tell the patient that you understand what they're going through because you don't. I don't care if you've been shot at before here in the States by some drive-by or you know you play with guns or you've watched combat videos or this that and the other there's nothing comparable to what it is like over there um, when you're walking down a street and all of a sudden uh, you know you see the locals walking around all nonchalantly and then you see one this one patient or this one person walk out um, walk towards you and you don't realize it but they have they're strapped with a, a suicide vest um, and they expl they fired off right next to your uh, uh, right next to you or uh, you see this kid walk out in the middle of the street and you're on watch and this kid is strapped with um, explosives and you have to make the choice of to shoot this kid who's maybe five or six years old um, so unless you've had to make those you know been in that situation don't try it um, when you're talking to them you know try to find out what's going on um, ask about any weapons and if they're secure try to keep noise down um, don't bang on the door or allow crowds because this um, so you want to try to respect their space and privacy um, take time to listen to the patient because sometimes no matter the patient if it's a psychiatric emergency sometimes just listening to them helps out a lot Alright guys, that concludes um, this chapter. Uh, if you have any questions, please be sure to send me a message either in Remind or in Blackboard. Um, 
or write it down and send it to me and we'll talk about it next time in class. Otherwise, y'all have a good one and I will see y'all next time.